Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this episode, we're going to start talking about complex arithmetic. So before I can really get into the nitty gritty of it, we have to talk about these three things, the commutativity, associativity, and the distributive laws of complex numbers. And these are sort of things that you maybe take for granted, but if we don't have them, we really can't do everything we want to do with complex numbers. So I'll just say that the multiplication and the addition of complex numbers is commutative. That means it doesn't matter which way around we do it. We can either multiply z1 by z2 or z2 by z1, add z2 plus z1 or add z1 plus z2 and we'll be obtain the same result. We also have associativity of addition and multiplication. That means where I put the parentheses, the order of the parentheses doesn't matter in this form. And we also have the distributive law that I can distribute multiplication across the parentheses like this. So we need these laws in place, now we can do complex arithmetic. So here I have two complex numbers, z1 and z2, and I want to add them, subtract them, and multiply them. So how do I do that? Well, I basically do it in the same way you would do real addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So if I want to add two complex numbers, I simply add the real parts and I add the imaginary parts. So if I want to add these two imaginary numbers, I'll simply add up their real parts and that'll be the new real part. And I'll add up the imaginary parts, that'll be the new imaginary part. So five plus two makes seven is the new real part. I have three minus one i, or rather three plus negative one, will give me two i. So this is our sum z1 plus z2. You subtract complex numbers in the same way you add them. I'm going to subtract the real parts, and I'm going to subtract the imaginary parts. So here, the new real part will be 5 minus 2. The new imaginary part will be 3, and I have to be a little careful here, minus negative 1 i. So our difference, z1 minus z2, 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 minus minus 1 will be plus 4, and that's the imaginary part, so I'll tack on an i. Multiplying complex numbers is the most uh, involved so far, so it's not as easy as multiplying real numbers. Here, we have to apply the distributive law. So you might think of like foiling back from algebra. I need to multiply um, both of these terms on the left by each of the terms on the right. So if I start distributing this, I'll have to do 5 times 2. I'll have to do 5 times minus i. I'll have to do 3i times 2. And I'll have to do 3i times minus i. So 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times minus i is minus 5i. 3i times 2 will give me 6i. And I have 3, or rather, minus 3i times i is i squared. Now, if you remember back to the last video, since i squared is negative 1, I'll, re I'll replace that here. So this is actually not minus 3i squared, but plus 3. So anytime we see i squared, we're just going to replace that with a negative 1. So at this point, I'll just group by the real parts and the imaginary parts. The real part will be the 10 and the 3. That makes 13. The imaginary part will be the minus 5 and the 6. That's a plus 1i. So this is our multiplication, z1 times z2. There's two tiny more things I want to introduce here, and those are the additive identity 0 and the multiplicative identity 1. Just like they are for the real numbers, if I take any complex number and add 0 to it, it remains unchanged, it's the same number. And if I multiply any complex number by 1, it's still the same complex number. In this video, you learned how to add, subtract, and multiply complex numbers. I hope you'll join me in the next video where we'll learn how to divide complex numbers and we'll introduce the complex conjugate. Thanks very much for watching and have a great day.